This video is sponsored by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitoring application that gives you the power to see why bugs are happening and experience them just like your users. Try it today at logrocket.com forward slash YT and check out LogRocket at the link in the top right of the video to get 14 days for free. Hey developers, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use mix-ins and some custom functions in your Vue.js applications. Both mix-ins and custom functions can make your development experience so much smoother, so much more efficient, and we are gonna get into the code in just a minute. Now, if you have object-oriented programming experience, you can think of mix-ins as imitations of parent classes, uh, and then directives are more like helper functions. But if you don't have OOP experience, that's perfectly fine. Just think of mix-ins as a utility used by multiple people. For example, if you're in an, if you're in an office, a photocopier would be an example of a mix-in. I know that probably sounds confusing. I'm not trying to make it more confusing than it needs to be, but hopefully these coding examples will show you what I'm talking about. So without further ado, let's hop in. First one we're gonna do is mix-ins. So mix-ins are available in Vue's official documentation, and basically they're a flexible way to distribute reusable functionalities for Vue components. A mix-in object can contain any component options, and when a component uses that mix-in, all options in the mix-in will be mixed into the component's own options. So one heads up before you start coding this, if you're using CodePen especially, make sure that you have the CDN pointing to Vue, otherwise it's not gonna work. So this JavaScript that I'm gonna be coding right now is super succinct. It's just 15 lines. We're gonna open this up here and then get our data situated. We're gonna return just a simple title We'll go ahead and say, what should we say? Just testing a simple mix, mixin, 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 mixin. If I can type, there we go. Okay, and then we are going to create a function. We'll do a pop-up because who doesn't love a good old fashioned pop-up? We'll do an alert, hello there. Now we're gonna go ahead and make our instance with new view. We're gonna open the brackets up there. And then right here, we're just gonna declare mixins. We're gonna open up these brackets and then we reference our const up here, which is my mixin. And then finally, we declare our element. Oh, I got a pop-up, it's already working. Element, and then we'll call this app. Let me comment this out for a second, otherwise we're gonna be bombarded with this alert message, whoopsies. So let's go ahead and just say div ID. That's gonna be app. This all probably looks familiar if you're familiar with view. And then this is where we're gonna put this title. And we'll close out the div. I forgot to add the hashtag down here for this ID. So we're gonna go like this and this should render our mix in. There's our pop-up. And here is our text, just testing a simple mix-in. The next one I'd like to talk about are directives. Now in Vue, directives are methods like v4 that you can create to modify elements in your template. For example, v if, that's gonna hide your component if a condition is not met. Well, with custom directives, we can take it a little bit further. We can have these global directives that we register so that all of the components in our Vue app can use it. We also have local directives that are specific to that particular component. Now, in order to save us just a little bit of time, I did pre-code the HTML box over here, but let's get busy with this JavaScript stuff. So what I'm gonna do in this JavaScript compartment right here is register a global custom directive called color. And if you check out over here, this is where this is gonna come into play. You may be able to put these puzzle pieces together early on, but let's just type this out. So it's gonna be view.directive, and then I'm going to put color in that string. Then I'm going to bind some parameters here. We're gonna bind our view instance. We'll do binding and then our V node. And then here we will define our element style dot color. This is gonna be bind.arg, and then we'll do element.style, we'll do a font size. We'll do, let's do 55 pixels. 
The last thing we're going to do, of course, is declare our view instance. And so this is pretty standard. We'll just open this up. We'll call this app. This has already been defined in our div over here in the HTML section. So no brain power needed on that. Data is going to have a message. And what should we say? How about a good old fashioned hello world? And there it pops up with that custom direct. And if we go down here, check this out. How cool is that? Again, this is a view custom directive. And aside from view already being so easy to use relative to some of the other frameworks out there, custom directives make your development experience just that much better. This last example is another customization helper. It's called a filter. Filters are really great for applying common formatting to text or heavy filtration to an array or object. Filters are JavaScript functions, so we can define them to take as many arguments as possible. We can also chain them and use multiple filters. So there is some flexibility when you use these filters. This example was inspired by Sarah Drasner. This is a tip calculator. And filters, as you can see here, something a little bit interesting. They are used with a pipe followed by the piece of data you'd like to be altered upon render. And so in this example, as you can see here to the left of the pipe, we have something called customer total, which is right here. Their, their total number, their, their bill. They spent a lot of money at the restaurant, $532.43. They went all out. And then the second one here is tip 15, tip 20 tip 25. So the tip due if it's 15% gratuity, the tip due if it's 20%, 25%. And so to the right of the pipe is what is going to be manipulated. And in this instance, we're calculating 15% of $532.43. And going to the next example, tip 20, we're calculating 20% of $532.43. And if we alter this, so now we have a total of $22, but a 15% tip is now going to be $3.35 and down the chart it goes. And this implementation, much like the previous custom function I showed you, is pretty simple to implement. It's 19 lines here and nothing too out of the ordinary, nothing shocking. It's important to note though that filters aren't replacements for methods, computed values, or watchers. And the reason for that is filters don't transform the actual data, just the output that we're seeing as users. So this is a great example of when to use a filter, but it is not a cure-all, it's not a replacement for your methods, for your computed values, for your watchers. If you'd like to experiment with these, I'm gonna be sharing my code pen link. You can check these out, the custom directives here, the mix-ins along with the filter example. I hope this video was helpful. As always, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.